Breath of the Wild released on Nintendo Switch and Wii U on March 3rd, 2017, which means we're almost at its two year anniversary. In August of 2017, I uploaded a video that looked at just a small number of glitches that this game had to offer at the time. Since then, there has been so many new glitches found, so here we are with Breath of the Wild Glitches Revisited Part 1. Starting back in the Shrine of Resurrection, let's take a look at the first glitch of the current any percent speedrun route, that being the scope clip. Using the same setup they do, after receiving the Sheikah Slate and using the scope for the first time, jump onto this wall and run into the corner. With the camera angle down, depending how you tilt your stick towards the corner, you can see Link sort of shaking up and down. When he got it so he's shaking two beats at a time if that makes sense, spam the scope and Link should drop right through the wall. If speed's your deal, you can get back above ground by moving to this area. As it happens, sprinting forces Link to stand up, so he pops right through if you start out crouched in the right spot. Just keep in mind, skip it in the opening cutscene locks the time and weather, so it won't stop being early morning, and it'll either be sunny or cloudy, and none of the Rune Shrine pedestals will function, so speedrunners are forced to clip into each one. However, we'll talk a bit more about that tech in the next video. For now, let's jump back on top of the Shrine of Resurrection and run forward into the opening cutscene. It'll try to make Link run to the correct spot, but here, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> Oh, and if you play further into the game, always avoiding the opening cutscene like Goombu did in his recent video, you could do some very weird stuff. Boom headshot! Boom headshot! Boom headshot! Before we move on from this area, I can't not show off this hole. It's just the shape. It was made for me. For real, dropping down will cause Link to pop through the terrain of the Great Plateau, where we could see a few things. Firstly, water just does whatever it wants. Secondly, you really know you're not supposed to be somewhere when the graphics start rebelling. It's, it's a lot of fun times. Now, that's not the only place scope clipping works. As it happens, activating the scope changes Link's physical orientation so that he's facing wherever the cursor is. Wedge him where he's restricted on multiple sides and scope in the opposite direction, and he should be flipped around, and the game will pop him through the wall of your choice. Like in this clip you're seeing from Zant, showing off that it's possible to skip both of the Twin Peak shrines using the scope clip. Scope clipping can also be done on a horse, but again we'll come back to that in another video. Moving on, here's a different neat trick they could perform on a horse. After using up its stamina, hold the target, action, and bow buttons, and tap jump. This will cause Link to briefly jump off his horse and enter bullet time, and then immediately remount, which refreshes the horse's stamina, though the visuals are glitched. As long as you get the technique down, you can do this as many times as you want in a row. Oh, and if you're in need of horse, look no further than Cleric's very own horse factory. You see, in a recent video of his, he shot off a glitch where he found that it's possible to damage Bokoblin horse riders as they spawn, causing the Bokos to despawn. The horses, however, remain. Since he's hovering right on the edge of their spawn area, this process repeatedly spawns more and more horses. Just give it a little bit and you'll have enough Mustangs to open up your own dealership. And changing focus, there's another glitch involving Bokoblins, but we'll need an ice weapon and a Moblin. If you have a Moblin toss Bokoblin, the Boko is in a ragdoll state. Freeze him, and for whatever reason, when he thaws out in the spring, he'll be stuck like that. Unable to get up, but very much alive and kicking. I've fallen, and I can't get up! For another handy glitch, find yourself a location like here in Kara Kara Bazaar. Using a multi-shot bow, if you stand here and fire arrows into the soft, fireproof tent, one arrow will turn into many, duplicating normal arrows. If you find yourself being lit on fire from being too close to Death Mountain, or standing near my mixtape, here's a neat trick. Whenever you begin a two-handed weapon spin, Link's burn timer will be reset. Do it every so often on your trek to Goron Village, and you can get there without being burnt to a crisp. And you could also cancel an attack mid-animation by swapping it out. And this, with very, very precise timing, can allow you to avoid using durability on a weapon if you swap it out and back in at the right moment. Much easier, however, you could actually do this with a shield mid-air. Just swap it out and swap it back in, and for the next few seconds, it won't lose any durability. This is really useful for a series of glitches involving shield flips we'll look at in the next video, but you could also use it to extend the life of your shield during slides. Anyways, now, let's take a load off of this floating campfire while I toss a huge shout out to the Breath of the Wild speedrunning Discord community. A bunch of glitch hunters and runners there helped me out with this video, either in research, providing footage, or both. In no particular order, thanks to Zant, Skedodara, CM30, DTM Elabroy, Silicat YT, Philofaxi, 
Old Sound, Kip the Great, Huan Ti, Cleric, Goomboo, and I'm sure there's others that I missed, but while in these videos I'm your proverbial glitchy tour guide, they're the ones putting in the work to break this game apart, so thanks to them. And by the way, like always, make sure you check the description because there will be a lot of handy links. But anyways, you're probably wondering, why is that campfire hovering? It, it just works. Now, moving on. Another useless glitch requires the camera rune and a dream. Just target and press the rune and crouch button at the same time. Now, you can shoot the bow with the camera out. And if you hold target and side hop, you can now control Link while he's in the camera view. Unfortunately, most actions are cancelled by it, but it's still pretty neat. And at this point, I think I need to include the flying machine glitch where you place an object on top of a minecart, allowing you to pick up both objects and yourself using magnesis and go flying. Sure, at this point, everybody knows about it, but I never covered it in my original video, so I'm trying to be thorough here, so there you go. And uh, that's a glitch with magnesis. For stasis, try using it on an ancient guardian that starts out partially buried. When it can move, it'll instead drop right through the floor. If you don't feel like fighting it normally, it's a great way to just not. And if you're trying to clip yourself through a wall, stasis can also do that, but we'll look at a nice example of that later in the video. Oh, and uh, if you're using a rune like stasis or any of the others, and you want to reset its charge, just go to your menu and watch one of the memory cutscenes. That's or get a text box for picking up a new item. The first one is much better because, like you can see in this clip, it allows you to do multiple stasis launches mid-air. Oh, and yeah, stasis launching is also a very well-known glitch at this point. Put simply, you stasis an object, smack it a bunch, and ride that baby for miles. Or you let it hit you, either way. Like Xant explains in an excellent tutorial of his, you can take this stasis launch a step further with a super launch, which is where you pull the glider on a lag frame while it's in the air, which makes you go much faster than the usual launch technique. Either way, the glitch is a staple of Breath of the Wild speedruns, as it allows you to travel very fast and very far with a pretty quick setup. Another great technique employed by speedrunners is the classic bomb jump. That's where we shield flip, drop a bomb, and detonate it to send Link's limp, bruised body forward. It's great for skipping huge sections of certain shrines. And same with Cryonis Jump, which has you shield flipping onto a Cryonis block as it rises up, giving Link just enough height to skip doing things the intended way. Another event strat is bow spinning. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but it's where you initiate a heavy weapon spin, then while the hilt is sort of over your head, you tap the cancel and bow buttons. This will make Link spin the bow, or nothing, if you have no bow equipped. This works with almost any heavy weapon, but the frost and thunder blades will transfer their elemental properties into the bow, letting you unleash elemental fury repeatedly very quickly. Next, this could be considered an exploit instead of a glitch, but when it comes time to unlock the compendium for your Sheikah Slate, here is something handy. This information and footage comes from Gaming Reinvented, so credit to him for that. Normally when you talk to Simon at the tech lab, he'll give you one free picture. Instead, if you sell a bunch of an item to a shopkeeper in Hatano before speaking to Simon, he'll instead give you that many free pictures for your compendium. If you have a new save file and you want to complete the compendium and don't mind using a glitch to do it faster, there you go. So I think at this point we've had way too many useful glitches, so here is instead something called the smuggle glitch. In short, it allows you to hold an object when you shouldn't be, which leads to some real weird stuff. So first off, here's how it's initiated. Stand shoulder deep in water and hold one of something. Jump and drop a bomb. Now you want to detonate it and pause in the third frame of the explosion, where you see, as Cleric puts it, a wide border and creamy center. A unique choice of words, but it's very accurate. From there, swap to the map and teleport. When you check your menu, you'll find that Link is holding nothing. From here, the next time you add something to your invisible stack of items, Link's animation will be reset, so that's another kind of animation cancel. This does have some uses. Like, for example, it lets you dye your armor without sacrificing the necessary items because if you're already holding items, you can't add any more. And now, if you add an item to the stack while the smuggle glitch is active, you'll stand up and be popped off your horse. Instead, activate smuggle, get an enemy to shoot an arrow at your wooden shield and have it get stuck in there, then go up to a horse, and if you mount it while getting the arrow text for the first time and then hold an item with the smuggle glitch, you'll be able to stand on a horse. From here, you can perform most standing actions, like, like if you're Philofaxi, game ending your horse and watching a cutscene as you are wont to do.
Oh, and it's worth mentioning that doing the whole thing with the Master Cycle instead of a horse gives you this. Today we're bringing you another non-stop volley of arms action. So expect a healthy dose of stretchy limbs and of course, fisticuffs. Now as we approach the end of the video, I'd like to revisit the topic of stasis clipping, something I mentioned earlier. Here in Trial of the Sword, once you get your hands on a metal box, set it near the wall like so, and use stasis on it, and then smack it a bunch. Before it goes flying into the wall, get in between the box and the wall and push Link against the box. You should be knocked back through the wall, and this could be done without the box, but that's basically how stasis clipping works. And doing it here lets you explore the great out of bounds. Much like fairy fountains from past Zelda games, as an example, each Trial of the Sword chamber is located on the same map, just spaced out. As such, now that we're outside, we can go on a sweet sightseeing tour. Just be careful though, while I was running around towards the side of this valley, I accidentally ran into a chamber that must have had a death plane around it, which meant Link was falling to his death, and then he respawned on the same spot, repeatedly, what a way to go. To finish it off, we're going to look at a really cool glitch. It'll be easier to explain if you see it first, so take a look. What you just saw was a bullet time bounce, a somewhat new trick that allows speedrunners to go from Temple of Time to Hyrule Castle in just about 40 seconds. It looks really cool, and it can be extremely useful, and it doesn't require many resources. So let's break it down. Whenever you pull out your bow mid-air, you enter bullet time mode, where time is slowed down. This is so that you can aim your shots and get your footage for that trick shot montage you're building. When exiting bullet time, things return to normal. However, it was discovered back in the latter part of 2018 that certain interactions aren't properly slowed down by bullet time. One of those interactions is Link bouncing off of a ragdolling enemy with his shield, like you saw. When you perform the shield bounce in bullet time and then return to normal time, you'll be going about 20 times faster than you should be, because the game just doesn't calculate that whole thing properly. As you can see in these clips from Zant's Master Sword speedrun, the bullet time bounce, or BTB, is used as much as possible. The gameplay setup always fits this rough outline. Get to a spot where Link is above an enemy. If the enemy is Red Bacoblin, you can just do the shield flip, otherwise anything stronger needs to be frozen first. Perform a neutral shield flip, and just before landing on the enemy, pull out your bow, and after bouncing on the enemy, exit bullet time and you should go flying. Depending on the part of the body and angle you hit with your shield, your trajectory can vary wildly, which is why BTBs done in speedruns have a particular setup for each one to make it as consistent as possible. Now, it's called a bullet time bounce, but a lot can be done with a bullet time mode. Like for example this, which could be called a bullet time cryo launch, aka entering bullet time as Link is getting pushed by a growing cryo on his pillar. It even works on enemies. Just look at that sucker fly. And lastly, you could even launch your master cycle and hop on top mid launch because why not? There's a lot more glitches to look at in this game, but for the sake of my own sanity, we're gonna call it here. And pick it up again next week in Breath of the Wild Glitches Revisited Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. In the meantime, if you're really into this game and want to get involved in its speedrunner community, feel free to join the Breath of the Wild speedrunning Discord. You can find a hyperlink in the description. You could also check out more of my videos, maybe subscribe or whatever, I don't know. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.